of Miramar without anything going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. We finally got there. We are now on to the eSports servers, which is happy days for everyone yeah. involved. And it makes our life a lot better. But what might not be happy days, it's not the most southern plane. It's going over uh, Pachingi all the way. It's not terrible. Yeah. But it's maybe not the greatest one they would have wanted. Not the fairest of them all. I mean, considering that we don't really have a designated far northern team in all of this, we do have a team in Severny. We have our team sort of sharing Stalba Kameshki in between them. We have a Yasnaya team. Other than that, though, I mean, there, it really isn't too big of a hassle, I think, for the most part, for teams to get all the way up there. Now, instantly, Moonwolf going to go and grab Milta Power. No problem at all for them. I want to know if these fights, though, mm -hmm. where we've got one or two teams really close to each other or literally choosing the same city, if that's going to continue, if everything's going to mix up a little bit here. Seven? Where are you guys going? There's Ooh. no one in Pachinki. Yeah. <laughs> Out of four, jumped out early, wanting to go Ross. Like we talked about it. This is where they went in that last game of day yeah. one. Seven there? Uh, hmm. You had the perfect plan for it as well, lads. Uh, I, think, I think Panko right now is flying. In his parachute, like, guys... Uh, I, I'm not seeing any parachutes in Pachinki. You guys might just want to turn around and come down here. Oh, wow. What the hell is this all about, Seven Gaming? This is very interesting, though, right? Because at least for Seven, maybe they thought we need to change things up a little bit here. And they have just opted to stay away from Pachinki, which for a team that's so aggressive, to me, doesn't make sense for them to be the ones that back away. But we get the circle. It's going to go mostly over towards the west and the northern side of it. But it's got a mainly a bit here over down south. Military base included in it, so 4AK will be happy of that at least for now. But it, will it go their way? Only time will tell. El Giganten has been in George Pole before. They're now in East Coast. I mean, of course, it was a far Western or Eastern plane in the sense of where it sort of uh, entered from. So they wanted to get themselves some more time on the ground. Swarm is over there now, looting. I mean, this is, this is like they won all over again. Yeah. Why is there nobody in Pachinki? I really want to get into the heads of seven here. I figured. W w since when did Gatcap become a priority over Pachinki? But then again, I mean, they have had some rough games as far as getting to that late game on a rankle before. So maybe they're saying, you know what? It doesn't matter that nobody else goes there now. It doesn't work for us. And our rotations, let's just change things up and uh, play from somewhere else. We'll be excited to see what happens when it goes into the next game and see if we see a similar style of play from all they just <laughs> go back now. Because they might have looked and thought, ah, okay, maybe this can work out. But Thailand, like you said... They had a potential. They could have just snuck mm -hmm. now into it. But Marga, he'd already gone quite up north. So yeah. he's a little bit split away from the team here. So maybe they just think, okay, we had to stick to our guns because if he does get picked apart here, or maybe he goes down early on, we're not going to even have a slight chance of saving him. Also, I mean, loot is loot in the end of things. It doesn't really matter where you get it as long as you have enough of it. <laughs> and th even though they don't get to loot Pachinki, they still know now, at least, that no one is there. And that's crucial information when it comes to rotations here, especially considering the uh, first circle that we get here. If they can have to not drive all the way around Pachinko, but drive through it because they know no one is there, that's going to save them a lot of time. Talking about saving time. That's what some of these teams will have to do when it comes to making their choice on the rotation here because mm -hmm. we've seen it before, right? There are certain teams that can play inside the blue and they know how to comfortably get themselves involved. But we've seen a few other teams who stand there for a little bit too long and it catches yeah. up them too fast here. We saw that yesterday on Miramar. We have to wait and see how things work out for some of these other teams here. But one team I definitely want to keep looking at is PG-18. They started off yesterday with a good win. Mm -hmm. Very nice play on Miramar. Then it slowed down a little bit for them. They even had a 16th place in one of the games. Yeah, right but after. They've showed, yeah, right <laughs> after as well. But they showed that they can be more than capable. And they've got some individuals in there, like Dees and Nailup, who can do a lot of damage individually and step up on a on a level that it kind of raises the bar a little bit here for them. One thing they also have, though, is a full set of seven esports in between them. And yeah. uh, I mean, now the info, of course, has come across, I would believe, from Yannick, Nemeroth, and Nailup that, uh, guys, uh, Gatcap was taken by somebody because obviously at this point they don't know who. And uh, yeah, this is this is where things get, get interesting. And that also just leaves me to the point saying that Teams always have to look behind them within the sky. Even though you mm -hmm. have your designated spot and it seems like the groups have kind of all settled and you can always go to where you want, you never know. Especially with so many games to be played, you never know when that one game comes where a team changes up and you just have to be ready to adapt to it. And that is what the name of the game is. Adaption has to be at its finest here. Now we're looking at Elgig making their way in. Like I said, they went for Lipovka to start off with here mm -hmm. and they're already trying to get a little bit more central. Everyone's avoiding Pachinki, and 
That's fine for now. There's no reason to be in it just yet, but it is near as damn it pretty center there. Vinko are going to be happy, though, because they've gone towards near Ferry Pier. They've got Windside close by to them. But at the moment, they're in a very good spot. If they can just hold on and don't fight too early. He's waiting for Sharky to come up and help him out. I like the play here, but I'm... Oh, I'm going to say unfortunate, but holy cow, a headshot from Apocalypse. Wow, and both Deeks and Savage go down because of it. Good positioning, but Coldamento is the one who's able to steal away one of the kills there. And he's looking to do some more damage. Able to tap on into it, but won't get any knocks out of the car. That is a rough way to start the day here for El Gigante. Not what they would have had come in their way. Desperados, they were up here early. They do loot this area of the map, so they set themselves up shop in the tri-block. And, uh, and wow, El Gigante. I mean, that was an insane last bullet fired there from Apocalypse. 3D Max starting off with early shots as well. On to Elgig as well. So Elgig were the one of the first teams to rotate in from the mm -hmm, east. Mm -hmm. And now they've really been punished for it. Tarlan's finding a player knocked down. But the revival will come in no problems at all. Problem here for Tarlan's is you're bottom at the moment. But also, you've had many times that you've gone out within yep. like the first few teams. Uh -oh, and not too much is changing from them. I mean, you, you, really, you really cannot... I mean, we talked about it yesterday and the day before as well. How, as you said, they tend to lose players early and they just haven't seemed to come up with a cure to it yet. I mean, now, of course, this was only a knock, but they're putting themselves into a position where, I mean, they can't get pushed by many teams. It's a good spot to sit in Pachinki Hills, but if you aren't one of the teams that are really good at having the info, also they just lost the vehicle down the hill there, it can become really tricky for them because they don't, I don't take them. I mean, they don't seem to me like a team that has, like, clear information at all times of what's going on around them. And if they are in playing from a position that's arguably difficult to play from, then that could be the downfall. Seems like Stella have set up shop in the um, in the double warehouse or double barns on the eastern side of a chinky quick map. They're coming in now as well. Last team to enter the circle. There's still a small chance, a slimmer of a chance that this one could go down towards the military island. And as we can see here, teams are setting up shop close to the water should it happen. And we normally talk about 4AK, the military team being the ones to be the last to rotate in. This time, they're already in the circle, so there's nothing that's got to be done here. So mm. everyone is going to be within this circle for our first one to go down. Yeah. And only Elgig have taken casualties. Yeah, I mean, just two players down so far, of course, rough rotation. But that's the thing, when you change up where you loot, you also don't really know exactly how other teams play accordingly. I mean, you don't... You just don't, don't have a lot of experience to go back on from this lobby in particular. Oh, 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 oh. oh fake. Watch out holding that angle. Example, it's going to take your head off. And he is not going to miss those shots. Give him the opportunity, and he is ready for it. Especially if you slow peek them like that. He was like quickly, like doing, jumping one step further, one step further, and he saw his head all the way. Now, 3D Max is Wagger. If you were watching the highlights before we got started, this man yesterday, mm. my oh my, he had some good individual performances. But 3D Max is another team that they've not been quite there to come up on the scores just yet. They've got a little bit more that they need to show us. Quick. 3D Max had an impressive um, group stage in the kickoff cup, came out, I believe, in first place out of that, but uh, haven't really. Haven't really been able to give us a whole lot since then, finished in 12th place, I believe, overall in the finals. And uh, well, now well now they got a chance, of course, here today and the days to come to show us exactly what they're worth. Now, Stella have been showing us over and over again that they are really ready and willing to be one of these aggressive teams that come out here. They've been fighting early on, no matter who has been rotating in front of them. I mean, they're sitting in the top right now without a win yet, right? And that just goes to show, I mean, they've yep. just been really, really consistent in getting up there. For them, it's just about getting to close out those games and get some chicken dinners. Circle number two is going to pop in just a moment. And we're going back up north. Now, this isn't bad at all, right? It's only 4AK who yeah. have the long distance to go in that sense. But Rosok's still going to be covered in it. And quick math, they could be one of the first teams over there. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see 4AK actually take the eastern bridge. And you know, it doesn't seem like they're going to. But there's a lot more to play from out on the eastern side as opposed to the west. Because you have the hilltop. And you have Pachinki itself and the fields around. I mean, it's not exactly uh, favorable terrain to play from. And the few priority spots there are there, you would argue that most likely they'll be taken already. But as you can see here, teams are rotating on in as we speak. And, uh, well, I mean, yeah, from the southern side at least, there's not a whole lot more to play from. Now, when we look and see all these teams rotate round, I'm going to keep a keen eye on this team here, seven. Mm-hmm. Because, yes, you've been aggressive so far. Now you're going back towards Pachinki where you'd normally yeah. drop. You've gone through Gatka. What information have you looked at that have made you make this decision? 
Seems like they're backing off now as well. PG, they came up to the side of... Uh, <laughs> like the finish. Oh, actually, he doesn't get the finish off. Ben takes the kill there. PG Stole losing it. a kill once again. That's the name of the game here. Goodbye, Dasha. And... Uh, and as you said, I mean, they don't have the info that they need coming up here. But but for them, I mean, they, they just gotta... They just gotta... Do we take vehicles or do we not? You gotta park them in a spot in particular where you can get around, because them, them being on the western side of the circle right now, should it hard shift out east and you start running already? I mean, you probably won't even have time to go back and pick them up at that point. Nemere making his run back over. Nailup, D is able to provide some cover fire, but 2 are UO. This man will at least land the headshot to kick things off, but it's only going to be a knock at least for now. Yeah. We're it's looking like... for more, taking a few shots. You saw the car going on and Nailup, hey. he's just looking for a res. Are they actually leaving him? Oh, surely not. What? Already? But, but, but why? Where is Yannick in all of he this? He died. Oh, he did get yeah. taken down when they tried to push him in the compound. These are Nemeroth. Well, no rest coming in for him. Cass caught with a nade in hand. Must have been hurt on the side of the building. You see the remaining stellar players there to help him out. But he did get control of the building. Oh, now he's getting shot by a hookstar from Elgigant. And that's not optimal whatsoever. That nade won't touch these just yet. So I'm hoping Nemerif is running off to his teammate. I don't think he is. And it is a tough place to sit because it's one of those plateaus where, I mean, honestly, Nates, they kind of just bounce off the back wall and roll down to you. It's like when you play bowling, but with the side things on, so the ball can't go off the track, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit of a help from Nate throws, and I guess they just didn't dare commit to it considering they already lost a player before. I'm so confused by that. Nailer will get finished off. Two of is just waiting and hoping someone from his team may come so he can take mm. another shot at him. But instead, no, they're going to let him go down. You can see the fact that he got to get an angle on there to shoot him also means that he would have had an angle to finish off a potential guy coming into rest. So dangerous play, but of course, we've seen Crazier. Talking about Crazier, 4 AK. Consistent aggression. Mm -hmm. Very confident to run off on teams. But we have seen them struggle at times. Ronnie, he's the one that always seems to be going forward. He's the one to get stuck in early on. The team has a nice dynamic there. That sick ending towards the end on uh, Miramar where they got lots of kills. They just couldn't yeah. get high up in the placement points because they got taken out by the eventual winners in Windside. And that was truly like a Clash of the Titans battle. As we're now going for a bit more of a hard shift back towards old military base. It's not going to be covered off, but it is down south, and we've got Desperados looking center here with 3D Max still on Potato Hill, and they're going to be feeling very confident now, because there'll be a fair few teams coming in from this western side that might go around them. And that's the thing, right? You have Pachinki blocking off a lot of rotation paths, and the same thing going for the Pachinki fields, both on the west and the eastern side, so you pretty much have to commit to yourself, or consider yourself, do you want to just send it down south, or do you want to go all the way over north, up into Pachinki Hills, and that's exactly what I see us I uh, see these teams doing right now. Potato Mountain is going to be the get-go because that's the only place you can really sit around where you can share spots with the opponents. I mean, the southern side, all the compounds are taken already. And, I mean, everything down there, if you don't have a spot to play from, it's just open. Whereas to the forest, at least you have some sort of cover. Now, I love this from Seven. They were down just outside on the west of Pachinki. They're now going all the way around up north going to rotate themselves back around either from the north or most likely the east mm -hmm. and play from a different position because they didn't like what was given to them just then. It's going to take a lot of time for them to rotate though and the circles already started closing in. Of course the circles don't close that quickly here. Now Tony, two guys in the vehicle out of war making that push on up towards Talons. Windside is up there as well. That's going to be a double explosion. Gifted gets himself a double off of that one. Some might argue he got it gifted, but now the two remaining other war players are nearby. And as you can see here, he doesn't really have the info to tell where they are. Boom goes down, gets one in return though. An instant trade out here and rip. He's on his own, so the push over the top is going to come in and they will go down. That's nice and easy. Art of War get the job done. And Talon's coming and steal a kill as well. Mm hmm. Talon's, they tried a third party on it. They do well at that too. Moon has gone down. Boom was already down. And now it seems to me like uh, Talon's might be able to get something off of this one. We haven't really seen this aggression from them so far. I like to see it, but you've really got to keep your calm here. You're still four alive against two. This is your good chance to win it. Bit of a trade-off with this. Talon's time to show your stuff. And that's exactly what Ermax is trying to get off here. 
Panko spraying out, trying to hit the shots. The Nator goes down on Windside, find themselves eliminated. That's four kills up already for Thailand's here. If they can res Marga, this could be something they can hold on to. Really impressive place. They lost one player, but got three kills off of it. Extremely well done by Thailand. And that's exactly what we wanted to see from them. We didn't have a lot of expectations. They haven't really been impressing us so far. But a good start to the first game could mean for a good day overall. Yeah, that little bit of confidence, that little boost to them to say, hey, look, we are capable of taking on mm -hmm. some of these big hitting teams. And Winside, they certainly have impressed us so far throughout the days. There's quick math on their rotation. Multiple teams tapping them down. And Salenso yeah. spins out a little bit there. And there's more shots coming out towards him. He comes out the car and he puts himself in the open. Mm. Luckily, Drone can't land the shots just yet. He's going to put a smoke down to give himself some cover. This is really interesting because Pachinki, I mean, north of Pachinki, that's where Quick Math was sitting prior to this one. And as I said, if you come down to this side of the map and you don't have a spot to play from, you're going to be in the open. And that's exactly what's happening to Quick Math right now. It's pretty much like Seven and Quick Math swap positions here with Seven now being up at Potato Hill. And they have a rough, rough rotation to make here because they're going to be fighting everyone making their way into the circle. Pelsish finished off and Solenso trying to make the run on off. And this is why it's such a dream here for Seven because they've got in the circle. They're on the eastern or the northeastern side. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at the map stream, guys, you'll be thinking they've got a lot of ground they can cover and a lot of teams they can push away. Also, we talk about how Seven needs to start playing to what they're good at. Up close, four-man yep. fights, that's what they can do and you can execute those, those kind of things when you're playing around Potato Hill. And we also said it right, they should do it when more teams have gone down, waiting before they start yep. engaging. Yep. So far, they're keeping it all calm. Why is Rotation staying on the edge, waiting for that late game fight? We talked about them, like to compare them to teams like Evangar and their usual play style. Yeah. We haven't really seen a whole lot of that. So far, that's one more rogue vehicle. <laughs> I like to see them, they're all over the place. And now Tarland's having a hard time pushing down this hill because there are multiple teams. And as you can see here as well, where oh where do you go? Seems like they're just going to send it full on forward. Sometimes that's the only option you've got as Ronnie. We talk about him being the aggressive player within this 4AK yep. lineup, and he's now getting tapped away. Example finds it onto him, but it's going to them losing a man early on here. And both Stella, Tornado Energy, and Elgig <laughs> are able to gatekeep a lot of teams from even making it in, and they're not far away from being in. There is just no Tyler's cover again. on the this southern time they side. Third party did. Yeah. This is huge. Great plays coming out from Thailand. So once again, and points they desperately need. They are taking some casualties in return. Marco went down, so I believe they're just two players alive now. But every single knock, every single kill they can get here is time forward for them. Havoggy, great knock coming in there, but he needs help from his teammates. There are none, though. So that's going to be hard. Yeah, he's all alone now for AK. They get stuck in very Ooh. early on, and now they pay the price for it. Nade's coming out towards Avaki. He's not going to stand up any longer. He's completely wiped out, and it's Vinko to do the damage. For a skill coming in from Vinko, but at what cost? Just two players alive, and they've been completely spotted out. Also, they're not inside the circle yet. Kofest Millman already made their way up the hill. Now one player remaining for the South African team, and they're not having a good start here today, number one. Oh, they is now trying to drive their way in as well. They want to get a better position, but where are they going to choose to play from? Because the compounds they're heading towards are taken already. Yeah, you have the dip up there where Aaliyah is sitting. I think that's exactly where they just stopped. Now Aaliyah, though, might be able to toss in some high skill, high class nades. Also, did Penko and Moonlight spot him? That's the big question. Spots one, do you shoot immediately? No, you don't. And waits it out, but Panko wants to come up close. Panko's going to get knocked down. He's going to get flushed out straight away. Quick map have gone down in the meantime. And now Alea looking to find this. Moonlight gets a nade out towards Alea. Damage done, but doesn't give him... Oh, wow. huge! Moonlight being on point here. Alea goes down. Great plays coming out of Talents. We've been missing it, and now we finally get to see it. I believe that's the kill number seven already. So pretty much getting as many points off of one game here as they have in the tournament overall so far. Extremely well done by Talents. Guess who hasn't come alive on this kill feed just yet? Seven. They will. We're at nine teams alive. This is them. They're trying to get this chance to come into it and keep some of these teams away early on. Moonwolf as well, sitting on the southeastern side, haven't really been uh, on the aggressive side so far whatsoever. They had a few circles in their direction, and they've made their way in with minimal distance. This one, though, going on the complete opposite side, and now uh, teams like Stella up in the double barns up there. Do you want to sit tight in the compound, or do you want to consider making a move on out? Because you could easily get pinned in there, shoot that next circle shift away. And this is hilarious, because seven... They literally, Frank and Buster, just got in these little shirts to play from the houses <laughs> and sit there and go, oh, okay, we've got a spot now. Oh, wait, no, we haven't. Let's move again soon. 
for 3D Max, they've not had to move in about three circles mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. They've been uh, holding the top tight. They were in the center for the longest of time. And now with this northern hard shift, does really pay off in their favor. Now, good for seven, though, is it that they still have two guys in Edelweiss and Krabik up the hill. So uh, Frank and Buster can easily make the move on up. But as, I, as you can see right here, they're not leaving just yet. They're sticking around, trying to make sure no one's going to push up on the east side. They want to make sure that their backs are clear because you do not want to fight a potato without knowing where your opponents are. More shots being made off here by Bat. Trying to land it long distance for Tornado. They'll escape for now and they'll make their way inside the circle. Stay back. Applying some pressure up towards Tornado Energy, but if they stay alive, if Tornado Energy lifts to see this one through, then that could potentially be um, Stella just getting completely pinned on down in the corner. Watch out, get spotted out, out, out of the vehicle. But Example is there to take him down. Brilliant work here from Tornado. Up at six kills already, got four players left alive. No real problems for them just yet, and they're looking for more kills. And too many Moonwolf players in exactly the same spot. Wow. You could almost predict that that was going to happen because the nades come in, and this time Elgig is thinking, we'll steal some kills now. We've only got mm -hmm. two players alive. We've had a bit of a rough ride, but we'll be able to hold on to this now. It's that last laugh. It's that last laugh. And Elgig Ganden, despite losing players early on, gets themselves a triple kill off of that one. Now Seven trying to work their way up Potato Hill. They've got four hours in front of them. 3D Max to the side. And they're also getting shot at by Desperados as well while I trick they make that travel up. And that's the thing. You cannot get stuck on the hillside here. You have to just continue pushing. It's like Omaha Beach all over the... All over again. Get off the beach. Here it's get off the mountainside. Because as we can see here, these guys on the side are doing everything they can to take you out. There's a much better rotation here from the 70 Sports team. They've not been able to take any shots really too much yet. Mm. It's been hard for them to get the usual aggressive amount of kills that we normally see from them. And they're now getting pinned down a little bit to not being 100% sure where they want to go. You can see here, I mean, there's just no way they can do anything from where they're sitting. Three kills for El Giganten so far. Two of them in Hawkstar. We talked about it being good uh, damage dealer on his team. He was kind of unfortunate in the first couple of games yesterday. This time around, he gets to live it through, at least for now. New Circle Pops is going to go somewhat south, and Talon's Moonlight prone to right in the middle. Well, he's going to have to move. He's just waiting for this all to go mm -hmm. down. It's a nice spot for him to fight from here. But is he going to be spotted out anytime soon? It's 3D Max. They're going to try and come into this. Yeah, for us, they're fighting on two fronts right now, and they have to uh, determine whether they want to commit to that or not. Buster, last remaining player now for 7 Esports. I believe there is... Uh, no, there got two guys up. Two guys up. Buster and Krabik both on their feet. Shaxi falling back up. They know the pressure is applied on North as well. And they want to play it together. Oh, El Gig. Considering how rough that start was for him on the first rotation, they lost two players. Mm. To keep two alive now, and they've got a couple of kills alongside it, that is huge. But what else can they do? Hugstar doesn't want to stop shooting yet. He finds Krabik, tries to land some onto him. There is some smoke down in front of him, but Hugstar goes to reposition himself here. Can he get the edge? Can he make this work? He's tapping away. He's getting the job done. The headshot has landed. And Hugstar, still confident, looking to get as many kill points on top of being in the top eight here. Aggressive plays coming out from him. We know that's how he likes to play it. Gets himself some damage done and the kill off with that one too. Like to see that Stella made the move on out from the uh, double barns. Never want to get pinned down there. So they're splitting it really, really smart. Three ones split in the western side. And uh, you can see now four ones and 3D up against one another once again. This time around, Apocalypse is the one to go down. Mitralia is trying to make this work. Good nade goes up. He's going to get close enough to Hedrick. Hedrick jumps out the way in these nades. Back and forth, he's got to be so careful because they're going to do a lot of damage if any of them do connect. It's all about ducking them and trying to get into it. But the fight is going to go in favor of 3D Max to start off with here. And this is where they're all going to start to push forward just a little bit. Shaq's able to reply with one on the banner, but they're going to try and stop him getting flushed out. Lars is also trying to flush one, but is it going to work? Comes in with a knocks, trying to get the finish off, looks for it. And Noki in the blue, he is just going to go down straight away. Noki was the flank on one side, Shaxi was on the other. So flanks on both sides have gone down, but the cost has been the biggest on the side of 3D Max. Hitrick is all by himself, and you can see now both Apocalypse and Lasso, they're pushing on on forward. I believe it's the first knock for Mithralius. So no stress on that one. He's just going to try and crawl towards the circle as the blue is coming in. But Apocalypse and Lassa, what can they do here? 
Apocalypse taking his time, just reached over, spots out Wago, will be able to take him off very easily, gets the hedge on to Hedrick, goes in straight for the flush, there's one more player remaining, but 3D Max find themselves getting absolutely destroyed here by four us. They might just be able to get the res on up towards Mithralius as well, oh, as I say that though, that's gonna be a tough one, don't commit to it, no, he's forced to back off, cast from the far distance, applied some damage and that uh, delayed him for that split second, that's it. That may have delayed him, but will it stop them for us? Two players left alive. Can they hang on? Now we've we'll got two in there as well. Tarlands, Moonlight. He's still in the circle. Yeah. He hasn't had to move, and he doesn't plan on moving anytime soon. And the thing is, they already have the kill points they needed from earlier. And he's getting even more off of this. They don't need more kills this game. They already have six or seven, I believe. So he's just going to stay tight. He's going to chill and let all the other teams do the heavy lifting and hopefully get to uh, potentially see a top five placement. <laughs> Tosera shooting at the trees, making it look super sketchy, but of course he knew exactly where it was. He's making sure he's saying, I'm still looking. <laughs> Don't peek you me. You dare move. <laughs> but Elgig, they can hear all of this. They mm -hmm. want to maybe try and get involved. Nades are pinned and ready. And they're all trying to throw it out. Fakes needs to do his best to hold this off. Got to be careful of the nades that could outcome towards him. Spraying, getting himself the first bit of damage done alongside his teammates there. Kofest will also find himself involved in this, so it's a fight on two angles. Mm -hmm. So this is where Desperados have to be really careful on how they deal with Elgig. They need to get him down fast, but a few shots are hitting, but he can't seem to get the knocks. Really tricky position to play from Elgig Anton as well, and they go down because of it. Fake gets him down and out. Not a whole lot more you could do there. But as you said, as you said as well there, James, they were fighting on two fronts. Unfortunately, he got the better of it in the end. Colton Mensa might be able to get rest here, but Calvin did go down just before. Nope, Colton Mensa down as well, and now all of a sudden, Tornado Energy team currently sitting in first place up against the team sitting in second place fighting things off but now the pressure is being applied from behind once again Stella still have four alive though but for how long can they keep it going as Kaz is knocked on the floor Compot is hungry to look for him here but he also needs to keep his back trying to cover here and he's actually going to find Tozera not looking for him fakes around as well and this is where Tornado can actually mm -hmm. get a couple of easy kills potentially because everyone is focused elsewhere it's only Tornado that's looking for him Tozera is looking up for Busta you heard him take out Apocalypse teammate up the hills from for us and everyone's looking all different sorts of direction at this point you have to kind of uh, expect them to have somewhat of idea of the remaining players but of course there's so much pressure so many things happening at the same time and pretty much everyone can see or be seen by oh. at least one other team Kofest gets himself one more and that's 10 kills for Tornado Kaz was thinking he could just get away but it's not gonna happen Tornado are never gonna miss something like that Tornado are not gonna miss any shots it seems Good amount of damage being done there from Kofest. Vak will just die out to the play zone or at least get knocked. And now he's going to try and crawl his way in, but it's not going to be Ooh. easy as Mole Man finally is able to put some damage back onto Tornado. So they're not going to be the strongest ones to live it out for the moment as Mole Man. He's not going to be done anytime soon. He's going to go straight in for those kills. And this is where Stella needs to take a commanding lead here. Then You've got the numbers. If you can bring the players up, you need to fight back against them. The knock came in on towards Compad as well, and you have to figure out, do you go for this one, or do you try to go for the finish off? I think he expects and figure that Jamboway is trying to hug the rest because they didn't see him go down. He knew that the damage was done to back just before, saw him get knocked, didn't see him get finished off, so he expects the rest to come in. He will get himself 1-2, oh. but at what cost? Already once again, Desperados trying to apply pressure, and this is what I'm saying. If you shoot at one team, you can be seen by another. This is it. It's so difficult for them to play from because at least if you're um, Stella here, like, there's so many teams that can't see you, right? Yeah. Where, when you're Tornado, you're seen by Stella as soon as they look down, and also you're seen by Desperados from the other side. Oh, wow. Come put headshot on towards Fake with the SLR. Well, take your head off in just a short moment. Fake, I believe that's the third not coming in for him, so he's going to go down real soon. So Sarah tries to do something, but Vac off of just sound cues, places a nade right on the tree, and that's going to take him down, and all of a sudden, things are looking really grim for Tornado Energy. Tornado with just one player left alive. Stella, they are the only team with more than one player in this. This is their game to win, <laughs> but it all depends on when these other players decide to strike. Believe me, if you die now and you see there are seven alive and you see that corner there saying fifth place, you're going to be like, are you kidding me? I was expecting at least a third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the normal circumstances of Compot. Taking lots of damage from the blue, just going to run away, yeah, let himself go it. out to it. It's not worth giving it to Desperados. There was no way he was going to live to see another circle in that one. So a uh, wise play in a regard there for him to stay put. But as you said, three solos against a three-man team. I like the split that we're seeing right now from uh, Stella. They're taking as much control as they possibly can. But uh, how can these guys unpurposely, like not unpurposely, coordinate 
uh, an attack against uh, Stella and win it. I don't know. We'll see, though. So we've got Buster from Seven. So Zero from Desperados, and he's going to be the next one going down. Apocalypse from Four Us in it. All teams that have been fighting quite aggressively here mm -hmm. and picking up a good number of kills. But it's Stella who are going to be hot on the hunt for everyone else. Ironically, I think Seven is one of the teams that has been the most passive in the end of this game. I mean, they were never there to take the first engagements up the hill. Apocalypse up there now, and Seven looking to get an E. Not, I don't want to say easy, but didn't have to contest too much for it. But a second place, nonetheless, should he not be able to 1v3 this one? We oh so hard and not going to happen either. Stella, we talked about then so many points so far, yet to get themselves a win. And they get the first one of day three. That fuggish looking star managing to get it done. <laughs>